So I am going to be making a deep V front with a halter tie on the back, but it will be a pullover version of the halter, meaning that I won't have a closure at my back, it'll just be at my neck. Um, so the middle of my back will just be pullover. So in order to do that, I'm cutting it on the fold, and you can definitely do it to where both are ties, where you're tying in the middle and tying at the top, or either one, whichever you prefer. So I am, I have cut on the fold. Remember the fold is the smaller part, that this is the si this side that will connect to your side seam, and then this will be the part at the middle of your back. And you want that on the fold um, for your main and your lining. And then for your front, you're going to have two of your main fabric that are cut mirror images, and then two of your lining fabric. So you're gonna wanna mark your darts. So here's my lining all cut out with my darts marked. Here's my main fabric cut out. And then you're gonna, on your back, I'm gonna cut two of the halter tie extensions and then cut one of the casing. And just be aware that since I'm cutting, if you're cutting on the fold or doing the ties, you're gonna cut on that line. But if you're doing the swim hook, then you'll cut on this line. Okay, I'm ready to get sewing. I'm gonna start by sewing the dart. I'm gonna sew right sides together or the, the, on the lining, it's harder to find the right side, um, but what, just determine the one that you think that is the softer side, and because that's the one you're gonna want towards your skin. And then you're going to put your lines together, and then you're going to sew on the wrong side with a stretch stitch from here to the point of that dart, and we're gonna do that on all four pieces. And then I also marked where the gathering was, just in case I changed my mind and would rather gather, but I think I decided I'm gonna do the dart. Okay, now that we have all of our darts sewn, we've sewn them on our lining and we've sewn them on our main, and now we are going to hem the side where our bra cups will be inserted. So it's gonna be, put your lining right side up, and with the middle, this is the middle, and then this is the, where your side seam will be, and you're just gonna turn it under half an inch, and then either use a zigzag um, or some kind of a stretch stitch, and just um, hem both sides. Now we're gonna sew our side seams together. So to sew your side seams together, the first thing that you're going to do is find your back piece. You're going to find the main back and you're going to face it up and up. So the piece looks like this. So up would be this way. So you're gonna face it up, right side, right side up. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're gonna take your chosen front with the right side down. So you're essentially putting them right sides together. So this is what it should look like. You can tell which is the side seam because um, it has this like, it goes out like that. I guess that that's helpful. And now that you have your main fabrics right sides together, you're gonna grab your linings. And the first thing you're going to do is get your front lining and you're gonna put the right side up. And now you're going to get your back lining and you're gonna put the right side down. So this means that your front lining and your back lining are right sides together, and then your main lining and, um, I'm sorry, and your main front and main back are right sides together. And you're going to sew these side seams. So when you sew your side seams, you're gonna make sure that you do not catch your lining in the middle part. You're only catching the top. Let me show it a little bit closer. So only catch the top and bottom of the lining because you need to leave this where you've hemmed um, like that. Okay, I'm gonna sew those with my serger and then I will be right back. Now we are finished sewing our side seams and we can open up um, our top. And you know, it's sometimes it's really hard to catch the um, front lining in because where you put your cups in and that's okay if you didn't. Um, so is what you're gonna do is just kind of clip it to the bottom where it goes. As you can see, I did, I didn't clip that one. I'm gonna clip that one and um, it's fine because we'll catch it in this other seam and then we'll have this open part to put our cup in. 
Okay, so now that we're on this step, we are going to baste all of our edges. If you were doing a non-halter version, you would sew your, um, you would have, you would have a piece right here to sew your shoulders. But since we're doing a halter, there is no shoulder seam to sew. We're gonna eventually um, attach halter ties to these top shoulder seams to tie it around your neck. Um, so is what we're gonna do right now is we are going to baste all of our edges together. So we're gonna start on one side and go up and around and all and around here. The only, and then we're even gonna baste our lining at the bottom. So the entire edges will be basted, your lining to your mane. And so you're gonna do this on your sewing machine, just a long straight stitch. And this will just make it easier when we apply the elastic in the next step. Okay, I'll do that, I'll be right back. Okay, now that we're done with basting all around the edges, we are ready to apply elastic. And if you didn't quite catch your um, lining for your cup and in um, this seam it's fine because you would have basted it down right there and this is what everything looks like and this is on the deep v full cut if you were doing the full coverage front this would be in a loop like this and if you had been doing the swim hook for the back or the ties on the back then it would actually be separated back right right here too so now that i'm going to apply elastic i need to get out my elastic measurement chart and for the elastic measurement chart, you are going to look under back arm side first. And since this is connected right here, I'm using the halter back measurement and I'm using the pullover. If it wasn't connected, I'd be using the S hook or tie back. And I'm going to cut one that's 25 inches long. And that 25 inches is going to need to go from the top of one shoulder right here, all the way down to the top of the other shoulder. And then I also am going to need two separate elastics for the front. So I'm going to need one for the front of my cup. And this is the, so I'm going to look under neckline for that. And I'm doing the deep V full cup. So the full cup has a little bit more right here while the deep V is, is scooped out right there to show more breast tissue. So under the deep V full cup, I am doing the pullover halter. So I'm gonna cut two of nine and a quarter for the smallest size, and then you can look around there and see what size you made for the top and get that measurement. Okay, so I have cut out my elastic, and I'm gonna start, the, the ones for my front cup aren't very long because they don't have to go a long way. So I'm gonna start with my back elastic, and I quartered it. I made marks on mine where my quarter points are, and when I cut out my back piece, I'd also marked it where the halfway point was. So the only thing on the bodice that I need to do is to match um, the shoulder right here and find the middle point between the middle of the back and that so that my elastic is quartered. And the quartering elastic just kind of helps you to have a gauge of how much you need to be stretching so you don't have one area that you've overstretched um, to meet the, the end and then one area that's not stretched at all. Um, so it gives you kind of an even, an even stretch. So I just use a marker and make, make marks where your quarter points are. And oh, those are my small pieces. And then I'm gonna use my rubber elastic. I'm gonna start on my serger. I'm gonna start on the top of one shoulder seam. And then I'm just gonna go all the way around to the other. So you can see I've got quite a ways of stretching to go. And that's good because you want to be able to jump into the pool and your swim top stay on you. Especially if you like to do water sports. I like to water ski and I remember when I was a kid, if I was wearing a swimsuit that was too big or loose and comfortable, when you fell off, <laughs> your swimsuit did not stay with you. So there's a reason why swim needs to be tight. So you can see I have left my knife engaged. And so I'm just really being careful that my knife is not trimming off. I'll turn you closer to look at that. You're just gonna have to look close that you're not trimming off any of your elastic that 
if you want to trim seam you can I wouldn't recommend it I just kind of trim if I notice that where I basted there's a little bit left of either that just to make this seam even but I'm not trying to trim because your 3 8 inch seam is going to come from your 3 8 inch elastic when you fold it over so it's not like a typical seam where you're trying to trim so that your quarter inch serger is your seam And there you have it. And if you, um, it may look a tiny bit bunched, but it's not gonna be that bad. It's just gonna be from where you've had to pull. And so hopefully your pulling was even. And now we're gonna do um, the elastic onto the front of our cup. So make sure that you're applying it on the lining side. So just pick where you wanna start, either on the top or the bottom. And I always like to kind of look at it and see how much I'm gonna have to stretch. This one, it's not a very big stretch. Um, and I, and I didn't tell you this before on this video, but make sure that you don't start stretching until you see that your elastic has been caught in the seam. Because if you do, you're just gonna pull it out. And if you're finding it hard to stretch, as soon as you have something on the other side to grab and help pull it through is also helpful. You're not going to have very much on this one though, just because you're only applying elastic such a short way. And of course you're not going to need to be stretching on the last part of it. So there you have it. I might have stretched a little too much at the beginning, but it looks good. One last one to do, and then we'll be ready to top stitch. Okay, my, my elastic is all applied, and now I just need to top stitch. So you're going to pull out your cover stitch or your sewing machine. I'm going to use my sewing machine with a zigzag, and I already have white, the threaded white. So. I like to, so first is what you're going to do is just roll it to the wrong side, just fold it under. And I like to make sure that my bobbin thread is the one that I want that matches my main, since my bobbin is what is going to show up. So make sure you go ahead and change yours now if you don't like the color that's in your bobbin. Increase my stitch length to 2.5 and I'm going to increase or decrease the width to 3.0. You can also, if you don't like your basting stitches, you can go ahead and remove them. It's really easy just to go ahead and pluck them out right now, or you can and um, do it before you top stitch if you want to, because it's easier to pull them out on the wrong side of the fabric. But do not remove your basting stitches until you have your elastic in. I like to use a zigzag from the wrong side. It gives me a lot of control. You're pulling it and then make sure that when you're top stitching it, that you're pulling it taut. So you're not wanting to sew puckers into your fabric. So if you just leave it the way it is, then it's gonna sew puckers into it. But you gotta do it taut the way you had stretched it when you applied the elastic. Make sure you back stitch. I'm gonna show you from the right side what it looks like. So when you stretch it, you can see it's nice and even. I'll do my other cut, because I can tell I'm about to run out of bobbin. When you wear swim, do you like to be active? Are you one of the kind that like to relax by the beach? I was more active when I was younger. And now when I think of a beach, I just would like something nice to drink until they in a lounge chair. <laughs> okay, I backstitched at the front and everything. Oh, and I did, I lost my bobbin. 
how many times have you sewn a beautiful seam and realized you had no bobbin? I'm going to wind a new one and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have changed my bobbin, which means that now I will be sewing with actual thread. Okay, so I've done, I've top stitched the front of my cups and all that's left is this top stitch, the back. So you can see where the front is top stitched. And now I'm gonna roll the back under and I'm gonna do the same thing. So now that we have all of our elastic um, top stitched down, we are going to pull this to the front and we are going to just baste our front cups together. So you're just gonna butt them up next to each other and use a wide zigzag. The wider, the easier. And I'm using, mine is a stitch length of 1.5 and a stitch width of 4.5. And you'll wanna butt them up as exact as you can get it. from the other side so I can see so it's easier as I just learned to start from the top end where you have fabric to grab than it is to start from the lower end oh that was so much easier so it's okay to make mistakes on camera and not do it perfect the first time right so I have it basted and now we're going to do our bottom band. So all we have left is our bottom band and our top shoulder straps. And then we're done with this. So I'm going to grab, I have both of those already cut out. I'm going to grab my band. It's going to be cut on the fold and I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it where the short ends are together and I'm going to sew my short ends together. Once I've sewn my short ends together, I'm gonna to quarter it. So I'm gonna make a mark on this end, and then I'm gonna take where I've made that mark and meet it to this seam and then make marks on the quarter point. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom of my swim top. I've marked my quarter point. So you'll notice it's your very back center, your front center, and then mine is not my side seam. It's actually a little on towards my front. So I marked that, I did the same thing on the band. I'm going to fold the band now to where my wrong sides are together. If you were doing this on a fabric, you could iron. You'd also iron it, but swim, you, you don't ever iron. So I think swim is almost quicker to sew sometimes than, than like cotton woven or um, even your knits because I like to iron in certain places and I don't on swim. So, okay, now that my band is like this, I am going to determine which side I want facing out. Especially if you have a directional print, do I like do I like this side facing up or do I like this side up? I think I like this one. So the side you like, you're going to put right sides together. You're going to put your center, your back seam where you've connected your band in the middle of your back. Some people like to put it on their side, but I don't, especially when my side seam is not my quarter point. Because then it messes up all your quartering. So you're putting right sides together, and this you're not going to have to stretch a ton. You see, it's only like a little bit of a stretch to go around. But you will need to stretch some, so you need to know how much that is, so that's why we quarter. So we can get exact. Okay, I have it all done. So you're gonna start, I like to start on the back, but make sure that you leave at least a one inch opening because once we finish attaching it, we're going to um, thread our elastic through this casing or this band. So um, you'll wanna have an opening to put that elastic through. And it's so much easier to thread it through than it is to sew with the elastic already in the band. You can also do a casing method like we do on the bottoms, but you're gonna you're gonna lose some of the width of your band 
and that means lose some support. So I actually wouldn't recommend doing that. So instead of doing that to keep your elastic friend moving all over the place is what you can do is we're going to top stitch it down and that'll help for, cause I really don't like to spend a lot of time adjusting my elastic cause you know, elastic will try and move all around. You see how slippery swim is. To sell, so you do more adjusting, you know, you do more pausing and making sure things are lining up and, and it's nice to have the three eighths inch seam allowance to have a little wiggle room. You don't want much more than that though. My band keeps wanting to come apart. So I'm just taking my time and picking up my presser foot every few steps and making it go where it needs to go. I'm back, getting close to where I first started. So I'm going to surge off and leave my opening. So you've left your opening. Now we're going to look at our elastic chart. We're going to find out what our under bust elastic is. So you're going to look at your front. It's a very last line. Your front under bust. Cut one of one inch elastic. Okay. So I cut my correct elastic length and then I put a safety pin in that edge. And I'm going to put it into the band and then we're going to fish it all the way through. I love this fabric because I get the beauty of stripes, but without having to match stripes because of the floral, it seems to just fall in this perfect place. Okay, once I've finished fishing this through, then um, I'm going to connect it at the back with a zigzag and I'll be ready to close up my hole that I had left. Okay, so I finished fishing my elastic through and it's going to look like this where you zigzagged it. So before you zigzag it, take the important step of making sure your band did not get twisted. Um, especially this rubber, it likes to, it can easily just fold on itself and get twisted. So I went back through and made sure it wasn't twisted. And now I am going to close this hole that I created to put that through. And once I've done that, you can, it's time to top stitch. Okay, we have finished constructing our top, except for our halter ties. And I went ahead and I top stitched mine down. It's kind of tricky to top stitch your in, um, right here just because you're having to stretch that band, um, and it's a firm band. So um, my tip is to stretch it evenly and to go slow. And I top stitch my seam down onto the band so that I'm catching my seam at the same time is keeping my band in place and to where it's not moving all around in your casing. Okay, so now for your ties. You're going to have two ties that are cut out like this and you are going to wrap the ties and it doesn't matter which side you wrap it around. Um, you're going to wrap it to where, so just let me get this up close. So you're going to put this in the middle of this with the pointing edge pointing down in the very middle and you're going to wrap it like this into where these edges meet and then you're going to find a clip you're going to pin this so now we're going to sew and this is just going to be with a stretch stitch on our sewing machine it'll be much easier we're going to sew across here and then we're going to sew all along this edge making sure that we are not catching our swimsuit. So you are definitely catching your swimsuit here because it's attaching it to the swimsuit, but you are sewing all along the edge right here. You are not catching your swimsuit and you're going to sew until the first point. So you marked your point on here. You're going to sew to here, then you're going to back stitch. You're going to stop, no sewing right here. And then you're going to start sewing again. And you're going to do that from here. So to here, and then you can just pick it up off and then sew the rest of the way. And then you're gonna get to right here and then you're gonna sew, 
keep the, keeping right sides together and a clean edge and then you're going to sew here and this will give you that point let me show it flat because it's wiggling all around on video so you're going to sew from here to here pick, pivot and then to here and then you're going to be able to turn this right side out um, through that hole so see that's going to be a right side out we're going to do that on both edges okay i did my first strap so i'm going to show you so this is what this part looks like and then this is what this part looks like so you're essentially skipping where you're going to go over your body and then once you finish your um i always like to clip this corner just so that it lays good don't clip through your stitching and then you're gonna pull it right side out and then you're gonna do the same on the other end so you have this hole right here that you turned everything with okay and there you have it all we have left is to slip stitch this and that's such a neat way to do straps i'm always fascinated by angie's patterns like oh that makes so much sense that's so cool um i'm going to do the other strap and then we'll slip stitch we are slip stitching our opening in our strap and to do that i am going to go ahead and knot a needle knot some thread on a needle i'm going to do it double and you're going to start on one end by coming from the inside and you're gonna come right at the bottom of that opening. And you're just doing this um, first one to hide your knot. And then you're gonna maintain an even, keep your, where it's folded even. And you're going to start on one side. And you're gonna put your needle on in the middle of, in between that fold, come out about a quarter of an inch and then you're going to go across like a ladder and you're going directly across and you're going poking it into the fold and then moving your needle about a quarter inch on the inside of that fold and then coming out the other side. So now I'm going to come where I came out, I'm going to poke in on the other side. It's interesting watching what you're doing and making sure that it's on camera. And I keep checking that I'm folding it with my hands where it's supposed to be. It's a little trickier with swim because swim doesn't press well the way like you would if you were slip stitching a pillow closed or something like that. So you're just going to have to constantly look and see that your, your fold is correct as you ladder across. See, I'm putting it in the, I'm going in the fold, coming out the fold, making sure that the threads are coming through. There. And then I'm laddering across. So I'm going completely, so if I came out this end, I'm going to go back in the other end, completely even. And if you don't have patience for this, you can definitely just zigzag or top stitch it closed. But this gives you an invisible finish. Or if you're sewing for a gift or you just enjoy handwork, you get a nice clean finish. And you're going to go all the way to the end. And then I have the end, so I'm going to gonna knot it. And then I'm gonna bury my knot in the, on the inside. And see my knot, and I'm gonna go over the other side. Now that we have our straps done, all that's left on this one is I'm going to put some cups in in my um, inside. 
So I have these ones that I get on Amazon. And they come in a three pack. I really like them because it'll show you, it has it written on there where the center is. This one doesn't have it written. Oh yes it does. So I know that this is a pair. So I'm going to put, you're gonna fold it in on itself and just kind of roll it. And then you're gonna shove it through the little opening that you have right here on the end right here. It's so nice to have them removable because they're, they're easier to adjust and you don't have to wash them if you don't want to or you can separate them in the wash because I notice if I wash my suits with the cups in there they kind of get like all folded and bunched. Okay so now once you have it in you're going to open it up. And if it's perfect, I'm going to fetch it around. Okay, I have one side in. I'm going to do the other, and then we're done. Isn't that exciting? 